Hi, I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101. I have a write-in question here. It says, Hi Paul, I lost my dad to cancer recently. We were very close. We worked on cars, rode motorcycles together. He was a big inspiration in my life. And not a day goes by where I don't miss him or talk to him. Perhaps shed a tear. My question, therefore, would be, is there anything I can do in order to try to cope a little easier with the loss? I feel I'm coping well, but I also think I have not fully dealt with things as I'm trying to be strong for my mom while I'm supporting my wife and my daughter in everyday life. Even though it's been quite a while, I hope this is not too deep of a question for this platform. It's a genuine one for me, he says. Well, here's, here's my thoughts and advice, and I value what I have to say here, but it's just my point of view. Uh, one of the reasons why I value what I say is because I've spent a lifetime as, a, as an artist analyzing so many things, and I've, and I've brought this all the way into ideas and, and perspectives, and, and I, I call this counseling, but it's not really counseling. It's really giving an offering of something that I have to the world that I'm qualified to give. And I call it Conscious Counseling 101 because what I'm actually doing is I'm actually saying we're counseling the conscious. We're learning to counsel the conscious. And I call it 101 because we don't have a place where we can go to school and learn how to do this. Man has all kinds of ideas and all kinds of platforms and all kinds of things that he uses to try to make sense of things. You know, we have religion, we have, you know, working ethic, you know, let's, let's make the most of what we have here. We have love, empathy, we have songs and poetry that help us to try to guide ourselves through life. And there really isn't anybody, I guess I could be doing religious counseling, and I do, or I could be a pastor. In a sense, I am a minister because I minister and aid, or I talk about the view of the word you said in your second letter that you had been a christian all your life but you don't necessarily as an adult go to church uh, the church can fall flat for a lot of people there's so many different churches as it is there's so many different religions it can fall flat because well i have a lot of videos on here if you're actually interested in anything i just say we can go into that but i won't talk about that today let's talk about some of the things you said there are only two key things here that I see that I need to speak on with you today that are very crucial. And one is that you said he was a big inspiration in your life. Okay? And the other one is you want to cope a little bit easier with the loss and you're not sure you've fully dealt with it. As far as dealing with it and what it is, the big inspiration in my life, your grief, you're shedding a tear, you're talking to him. These are byproducts that are good because the big inspiration in your life is somehow so large it's transcended even his mortal realm. And it's going on. Why would you want to stop that? Every tear, every emotion, Everything that you feel and think and speak to him, and that you feel he speaks to you, even if it's a remnant of what he left behind, is still valuable. And it proves its worth and value every time you feel it and act on it. Become full from it. I would offer you my counsel today in saying, don't try to do anything to rebuff that. Don't try to do anything to lessen that. In fact, go farther. Go farther and look for it in all the aspects of your life. Find ways to bring it in. If it's genuine, it will continue to build you. It will continue to make you everything you inspired to be from that source. And why would you want to ever shut the tap off of that? Well, your other indication that you wanted to be strong for your mom. And you want to make sure you're supporting your wife, your daughter, 
and you want to make sure you're dealing with it, you want to make sure you've fully dealt with things. Well, that process that I just talked about is the fully dealing with it. It doesn't have to detract. In fact, the fact that you would even ask this question shows that you are already on the right path in dealing with it. What I would say is welcome it. Take all the strengths and none of the negativity. And don't look at it as negativity. Don't look at your feelings and your sadness and sorrow as negativity. Look at that as gifts that prove how valuable this was every day of your life. And take that, bring it inside, internalize it, and through your perspective counseling, conscious counseling perspective, look at it in such a way that only a person that was that big of an inspiration in your life and only a person that went on to the realm of God, or even if God didn't exist, was allowed to be the creation he was for you in this mortal realm, and see how that continues on, and how we link together with other mortal beings and their consciousness, and take all the great gifts there are, and hold on to those strongly, and don't try to push those away at all. But realize that by doing that, you will be dealing with it. You will be becoming all that you can be through your perspective. And then take the all that you can be. And you'll have more strength to deal with your mother. You'll have more strength to deal with your family. You'll have more strength to deal with every circumstance and every person that comes into your life, both now and forevermore. Why? Because unless there was anything negative, and when you look and you have regret and sadness then everything was positive we are all flawed human beings we all have lacks and limitations but you're not calling attention to that you're calling attention to the inspiration and you're seeing the negative as being it's so much for you it's more than you can bear no it's such a big gift it goes on forever don't try to bear it don't try to stifle that let those gifts continue to give. I had a friend in college, one of my roommates, one of my best friends I ever had. I only knew him for four years and then he died in a car accident. My life has been forever changed because of him for the positive. I think of him all the time. Now that I'm 55 years old and I last saw him 30 maybe 35 years ago, I probably can't say honestly that I think about him every day, but I can say that because I was so willing to think about him for so long, and he had so much to offer and give, that I have changed and transformed my life into a higher heightened conscious state, both physically with my skills and my vision of the way I see things through his eyes and what he taught me and showed and shared in that brief period of time, and with what I allowed that to do for myself, as I'm saying that you will do now. I continue to build on what he inspired. And I carry that with me every single day. And there isn't a thing I lay my hand to that I don't know that, the, that it came from his help. I can give an argument or a reason for every way that I look at everything and interact with it that positively came through those brief four years with him as my friend before he was killed. So even though I'm not thinking about it now, I'm still somewhat saddened because I'd like to have him here to talk to. But I realize he gave me so much that in a way it goes on. I know you, people have said this to you and you've felt these things, but I'm I'm reinstilling them into you. Because I've embraced what he offered, his gift, his memory is boosted, and I thusly am also boosted by all that he was. If I were to try to shut him out of my mind, then I would be at a loss, and I say, well, would he, would he want that? No. Not somebody that wants to truly inspire you, that means so much to you, that loves you. Of course he wants you to do. So what you need to do is you need to take up the reins on a daily quest for even going farther towards talking and shedding a tear and thinking and being inspired. So that 
all the fulfillment of what you can develop into your heightened conscious and perspective can overflow from within you. And there'll be more than enough for you, more than enough to prove his value and worth forever, more than enough to transform you into somebody that can do even more for your mother, for your family, and for everything else, every other circumstance that comes into your life. This cannot ever be overstated. This gift is of the Creator. And even if you say there isn't a Creator, if you want to apply different levels to it, let different labels, it's still of our conscious ability to realize and form real, lasting bonds and perspective enhancements that go far beyond our ability to even fully understand with our conscious mind. But we know they're there, and we nurture them, we noodle them, we encourage them, and in so doing, we honor the places they came from, and honor the vessel they came to, and honor the vessel and everything that we become because of them. And when we embrace that, we have more to offer and give, and more growth. And then everybody, then, benefits. Every life and circumstance you touch also gets benefited by what he gave you. And that goes into the beyond farther than what he could touch. Now you are a servant. You're a vessel carrying what he had. And every facet of your life that you touch and your family and every friend and every statement and everything that you do that affects the world becomes a part of a tribute to what he was and still is. And if you can have this heightened conscious of understanding of this daily, don't look at it as a sadness. Look at it as a reflective time that only a factor of life that's that large and that significance could do. And because we're so unfamiliar with those feelings, we think, this is not normal. I don't want to have this. Yes, you do. It's one of the most valuable things you have. Continue to treat it as such, and it will continue to serve you all the days of your life. And the good thing is, you will go beyond, and others will do the same if they're so consciously heightened for you. And the world will improve because the Creator instilled this in us. This miracle. And people say miracles don't happen anymore. No, they do happen if you know how to spot them, you know how to encourage them, and you know how to be a part of them. This is what Conscious Counseling 101 is. And I hope that some of these words spoke to you today. I'm Paul Roberts, and this is Conscious Counseling 101.